Biological nutrient removal operations can lead to significant emissions of greenhouse gases, which include nitrous oxide, a gas that has over 300 times the global warming potential of carbon dioxide. I'm very proud of what the wastewater utility industry is doing here in addressing the issue of N2O emissions from these treatment systems. This is it's certainly a timely issue, but it's an issue where the industry is walking its talk in terms of collecting the data on a proactive basis and developing the science so that we understand how to manage this. The truth is that in terms of global emissions, the emissions from treatment plants is, is, is very small. One could question whether the industry should be, should be dealing with this at all. But as practical environmentalists, it is critical that we collect the data and that we develop the science in order to incorporate this into our approaches for managing nutrients. I think WERF is to be congratulated for taking a leadership role for the industry and helping to collect this data and networking on an uh, international basis to share this data to help develop the, again, develop the science, but develop on an international basis a consensus of how to deal with this issue. Our research team developed this project to understand the magnitude of nitrous oxide emissions from wastewater treatment facilities with biological nutrient removal. This project is one of the first WERF projects to investigate greenhouse gas emissions from wastewater operations. Under current and proposed greenhouse gas emission regulations, large wastewater treatment plants may be potential major emission sources. Until recently, the reactions of nitrification involving nitrous oxide generation were poorly understood. WERF is collaborating with the Global Water Research Coalition to leverage our research funds and exchange data and protocols with researchers in Europe and Australia. After collaborating with our GWRC partners, our research team developed this protocol. One of the foremost products from this project is the development of a gas and liquid phase sampling protocol. Using the protocol, it becomes possible to measure spatial and temporal variability in nitrous oxide generation and emission from BNR reactors. We have requested the US EPA to comment and review our approach to make it rigorous and sound. Our principal investigator, Dr. Kardik Chandran, from Columbia University demonstrated the monitoring protocol after the Nutrient Conference in Washington, D.C. this summer. Here are some clips. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Kardik Chandran from Columbia University. I'm also the principal investigator of uh, the Water Environment Research Foundation project, U4R07, on uh, measuring nitrogenous greenhouse gases from activated sludge. Uh, we are right now at Blue Plains in Reactor 11, uh, the nitrification denitrification process. And you're all going to see the live demonstration of the WERF nitrogen greenhouse gas measurement field protocol. So this is a live demonstration of the, the WERF nitrous oxide uh, greenhouse gas monitoring protocol. We are now standing on reactor 11 in uh, Blue Plains. Uh, the way this is configured is we have two aerobic zones, followed by two anoxic zones, and followed by a fifth anoxic zone before, uh, before we hit the effluent channel. Uh, we have two sets of assemblies that we will go over. Uh, this allows us, we have two sets of sensors, everything is uh, duplicated, so we can go two zones by two zones in every, uh, in every plant that we visit. Uh, we make use of real-time analyzers, so uh, we get real-time, minute-by-minute uh, measures of variability, and that's how we are able to gauge what the diurnal patterns in N2O and NO emissions are. And uh, if you would like to peek over, uh, you can see the emission uh, flux chambers which are uh, basically a replica of what the EPA initially made and used for uh, VOC testing. And we are basically adapting that just to, be, just to make sure we are compliant uh, when these results start uh, going back, uh, back, back through up the chain. Okay, uh, you see several tubes connected to the flux chamber and uh, a lot of those tubes come back up and uh, they are hooked up to these real-time analyzers. What you see here is, uh, is one of them for nitrous oxide, uh, and the principle of measurement is uh, infrared gas filter correlation. So if you want, you can also take a quick look at the value. Right, right now we are at about 0.47 milligrams uh, parts, per, uh, parts per volume, parts per million volume 
of N2O coming out of this flux chamber right now. Uh, and then we also have that, that red box you see there is a field gas chromatograph. Uh, there's not really much effort or uh, there's really not much effort in measuring the N2O because this is just a box which, we, which just sits here and measures. One of the biggest uncertainties is in the flow rate that comes out of the flux chamber. Uh, because we want fluxes, which are a product of flow rate times concentration. So concentration is not a challenge. Flow rate is one of the biggest challenges. And that's why we use, a, you, we use an ASTM 1946 method. We inject helium that you see there. It's a helium tank at known concentration. We inject it into the flux chamber. And then we read out the helium back out. And obviously, it is diluted by the flow of gas. No. Since we know the mass of helium injected, mass of helium coming out, they should be equal, uh, so we calculate the flow rate by dilution. And this we do every three hours, round the clock. Uh, any plant we go to, we are, as I said, we are, we are there for about, well, it depends on how the plant is configured. For example, in Blue Plains, we are doing four zones. We have two, two of these, so we can do it in two days, basically, 48 hours. But in a four-pass step feed system, we need to do it over four days. So it depends on how the, how the plant is set up. This setup is for uh, an anoxic zone or a non-aerated zone. And you see the setup is pretty much identical. We have a flux chamber with the tubes going in and going out. This is the same N2O analyzer that we had on the other, on the other tank. The main difference is, is the presence of the sweep gas pump because, as I mentioned, there is no active uh, aeration going through this tank. So we need to uh, force air through the flux chamber to keep things mixed and then, out, then we measure the efflux. The other thing which, is, which no one else is doing is measuring uh, the liquid phase N2O. We need to do this because the solubility of N2O is about 640 milligrams nitrogen per liter. So we absolutely need to do this. And we have, uh, we have a Clark type electrode uh, which is connected to a picoammeter. It's a micro sensor, so you can basically use it for bulk measurement or even biofilm measurement. And that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, and we do helium gases and uh, helium gas and uh, microelectrode measurements once every three hours. So, that, so we need to keep moving uh, things a little bit. Nitrous oxide, along with nitric oxide, is a known intermediate of denitrification. During heterotrophic denitrification, oxidized aqueous nitrogen compounds, such as nitrate and nitrite, are sequentially reduced to gaseous nitrogen compounds, such as nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, and eventually to nitrogen gas. Until now, the contribution of nitrous oxide emissions from biological nutrient removal facilities has been ignored and not routinely calculated as part of the carbon footprint. Nitrification can potentially be a far higher contributor to nitrous oxide emissions because, unlike denitrifying bacteria, nitrifying bacteria produce nitrous oxide but cannot convert the nitrous oxide further to nitrogen gas. Based on consistent trends observed during the field measurement campaign, nitrification has emerged as potentially a far worse contributor to nitrous oxide emissions from biological nutrient removal plants than denitrification. Based on this project, nitrification needs to be included in the greenhouse gas emission inventory from biological nutrient removal plants. Due to the variability diurnal or load-induced, the use of a single emission factor can significantly misrepresent the true nitrogen greenhouse gas emissions from BNR plants. The use of an emissions factor is to apply an average result to a dynamic problem. Using our new understanding of the pathways for nitrous oxide generation, it will be possible to design and operate environmentally sustainable biological nutrient removal reactors to minimize both aqueous and gaseous phase emissions. Our ultimate goal is to input mechanisms for nitrous oxide production into available models for the activated sludge process to place a reliable tool in the hands of designers and process control staff. They can use it to make informed decisions about process changes that will minimize emissions, and they can use the WERF protocol for measurement to track improvements with time.